ABC 10 News at 11 starts now. We expect some confusion. We expect to educate those who are confused about our policies and about our compliance with the state. Confusion continues tonight over Cal OSHA's COVID-19 workplace safety rules on mask wearing. As we told you last night, the board withdrew guidelines it adopted just last week. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kimberly Hunt. As our ABC 10 News reporter Laura Acevedo explains, these rules will stay in place at least until the end of the month. The back and forth is causing some confusion, but the key here is that if you are at work, you are required to wear a mask, vaccinated or not, until Cal OSHA updates its guidance. We've kind of gotten used to the lack of coordination at this point going throughout the pandemic. Austin Davis is the general manager of Seaside Market in Cardiff. He applauded Cal OSHA's move last night to withdraw rules on mask use adopted last week. Davis hopes they'll vote to fall in line with state guidance next week. It was very stringent, wasn't in alignment with the CDC guidance or even the guidance coming out of the state. So I'm glad to see that they're at least reconsidering. On June 15th, when the state reopens, you can lose the mask if you're vaccinated. But if you're at work, the mask stays on, regardless of vaccination status or if you're indoors or outdoors. As legal analyst Dan Eaton explains, Cal OSHA's rules stand when you're at work because they have jurisdiction in the workplace. But this confusion is going to lead uh, to some level of friction, and we're just going to have to work through it. Eaton explains it like this. Uh, let's say you work as a server in a restaurant. Uh, between now and the end of the month, you're going to have to wear a mask while you are at work. You leave the restaurant, you finished your shift, you say, I really like where I work, I'm going to come back to the restaurant and enjoy a meal with my friends. No mask. Davis says his employees will be allowed to lose the mask if they're vaccinated when the state reopens, hoping this confusion ends soon. I am personally very relieved that we are almost at the end of the tunnel here. We have been looking forward to this realistically since the first day the lockdown came in. Laura Acevedo, ABC 10 News. The Cal OSHA board is set to meet next Thursday. Even if they vote to follow state guidelines, those new rules would not go into effect until June 28th. That's two weeks after the state reopens. And the CDC is now investigating whether a rare heart inflammation is a side effect of the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines. An advisory committee found 226 cases of myocarditis in people under the age of 30. That's higher than expected in the general population. But the CDC is stopping short of linking it to the Pfizer and Moderna shots. Instead, experts are issuing an alert about the symptoms. It seems to start with uh, chest pain, shortness of breath, and exercise intolerance. The push to get more young people vaccinated comes as the dangerous and highly contagious Delta variant spreads among teenagers in the UK. Moderna has now asked the FDA for authorization for its vaccine for 12 and 17 year olds. Meantime, vaccine hesitancy is feared to be behind a spike in hospitalizations. Hospitalizations are doubling across the U.S. in counties with the lowest vaccination rates compared to counties with the highest numbers. Meantime, federal health officials approved extending Johnson & Johnson's vaccine shelf life by six weeks. And that means doses are now good for four and a half months even when they're stored properly. This also alleviates concern that thousands of J&J &J doses were set to expire in a few weeks. A warning about a rise in online scams offering fake COVID-19 vaccine cards. The San Diego County District Attorney's Office says those producing and selling phony vaccine cards could face both federal and state criminal charges. That's because the vaccine cards contain official U.S. government seals. And those who have gotten vaccinated are being urged not to post pictures of their vaccine cards on social media because that could lead to one's personal information being stolen for fraudulent reasons. Here are the latest coronavirus numbers. Today, the county reported 111 new cases. That brings the total to more than 281,000. One more death was also reported. More than 3,700 San Diegans have lost their lives to COVID. 
On the vaccine front, about 75% of eligible San Diegans have received at least one dose. 61% are fully vaccinated. Keep track of any new developments in the pandemic by heading to our website, 10news.com. Some residents in Encanto were shocked to learn tonight about a boil water advisory. This comes after a contractor hit a pipeline contaminating the water in the area that you see here on your screen. We went out to the neighborhood where the city said it was advising people to boil their tap water. We spoke with one resident who said the city never came through to warn anyone. Um definitely concerned about this because I have water for me. I'm boiling pasta luckily at the house, but my dog drinks water, so it, it's a concern. The city did tell us residents in the area should continue to boil their water until further notice. New at 11, high temperatures are in store for San Diego County next week, and firefighters are readying themselves for the heightened threat of fires. ABC 10 News reporter Anthony Pura shows us how drier conditions are also increasing the risk of large flare-ups. Next week, a heat wave is forecasted for San Diego County. Cal Fire says that, coupled with dry vegetation, increases the chance for a large-scale fire. You know, San Diego uh, really has a year-round fire season, but we're entering the time frame where the fires have the potential to be much larger and more catastrophic. Frank Lococo with Cal Fire spoke with ABC 10 News over the phone about their crews and resources at the ready. Over two dozen engines, you know, typically four bulldozers, two uh, fixed-wing air tankers, multiple helicopters available throughout the county, multiple hand crews available throughout the county. Um, every every piece of frontline equipment will be staffed and, and ready to respond. California's drought monitor shows the drought status for all counties in the state. The most recent data shows San Diego County is mostly in moderate drought, though portions of the county have moved into the severe drought category. Other parts of the state are experiencing worse drought conditions. Anytime we have these these hot and dry conditions that last, you know, the better part of a week, whatever moisture is remaining in our fuels it continues to dry out and that in turn increases the chance for uh, fire activity. Cal Fire is reminding families to have an evacuation plan in place just in case. So you have items in a specific area or a, a punch list, if you will, of things that you need to do in the event you have to evacuate. And make sure your family knows that plan. Anthony Pura, ABC 10 News. Let's bring in meteorologist Angelica Campos, who's tracking this coming heat wave. Angelica. Hi, Kim. You know, before we used to think of fire season as this season with Santa Ana winds, but now as we head into the summertime, we know that is different. And one of the factors last year was actually dry thunderstorms. Next week, we head into monsoonal season and uh, with conditions becoming drier. And as you can see, the drought monitor showing how much worse it is. That also means the vegetation has very little moisture available. So basically, when you think about um, anything burning, vegetation is almost like paper when it's so dry and it can burn and spread very, very quickly. You can see the comparison on the right, October 1st versus today. Conditions have gotten much worse. And just as you heard, there is a heat wave on the way. The worst of it is going to be across the Pacific Southwest, and we're going to see those temperatures increasing in our inland communities, mountains, and deserts, and even the coast. But believe it or not, the clouds and the marine layer may actually help coastal communities. I'll have a full breakdown of what to expect, but an excessive heat warning will begin on Monday. And keep track of weather conditions in your area anytime with our ABC 10 News mobile app. It's free in the App Store. California is appealing San Diego judges ruling overturning the state's assault weapons ban. Last Friday, Judge Roger Benitez ruled the ban violates the Second Amendment, comparing the AR-15 to a Swiss Army knife. Benitez placed a 30-day stay on the ruling, giving California time to appeal. And today, California's Attorney General did just that. Governor Gavin Newsom says keeping our gun laws intact is crucial. Gun safety saves lives, period, full stop. The data bears that out. California's laws have led the nation. We continue to lead the nation. California is asking the appeals court to keep the ban in effect during the entire appeals process. 
The recall election will come with a hefty price tag. California counties will have to pay an estimated $215 million. That's according to an early projection from the state finance department. This comes after several county officials urged the legislature to provide funds to cover the costs of the recall election. Otherwise, they warned that the costs could strain local budgets already weakened from the pandemic. A date for the recall election has not yet been set.